Which RTX 40 card to get? Or should you go with Team Red instead? Today we are checking out RTX 40 cards from PNY, the 4070 Ti Super, 4080 Super, 4090 and 7900 XTX from Team Red of course. Results are of course mixed, I think you already know the winner obviously, but what I was curious all the time was the battle between these two cards here and where does the 7900 XTX fit in all of that. Word from a sponsor and let's begin. Looking for affordable Windows or Office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your Windows edition, use my discount code LE25 to get a 25% on any Windows or Office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds you will receive your code. In Windows, go to Settings, there should be an Activate Windows prompt at the bottom, click that, enter your code and wait for Windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with a command SLMGR dot vbs slash xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again use code le25 at scdkey.com. First I would like to show you the cards and thank PNY for providing the cards for the test. These are the Virto Epic X cards by PNY with gorgeous RGB across the card with that X shape in the middle. The back plate is of course metal with cooling pads as well. It has that brushed aluminum design. They are very stealthy yet RGB enabled so no complaints there. But if you mount this card vertically the only drawback might be the Accelerate logo in red but you can always remove the sticker if you don't like it at all. All RTX 40 cards use the new 12 volt high power connector, honestly I don't like it, it's so fragile and my hands are always like shaking when I'm connecting these cards. On the other hand the AMD went with the traditional 8 pin design. These are proven to be good so they opted for the 3 8 pin design for the power delivery and this card is an absolute monster with an overkill heatsink design. Seriously, it looks way bigger than all of these PNY cards, even though they are pretty big as is. But this one is just monstrous. Specs of all the cards are on the screen, so you know what we are dealing with here. 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super are both with 16GB of memory. Technically, these are the same chip under the hood, where the 4070 Ti Super has less cores, so you can pretty much expect similar results from these two. The RTX 4090 is of course a monster in its own league and both it and the 7900 XTX are equipped with 24GB of memory and both are the flagship models that companies offer. But enough with the card specs, the test system I used is equipped with the NZXT N7B650E motherboard, 32GB T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 RAM, clocked at 6000MHz and of course the CPU is the GOAT, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, currently the best gaming CPU you can get. All the tests are done in 4040p resolution as it is one of the most popular resolutions now and honestly I haven't had a time to repeat all the tests in 1080p as I believe that majority of you will want to game at 1440p as it's literally the sweet spot resolution now. While 4K still remains the best looking one but current hardware is just not capable for smooth experience in triple digit frames per second in that resolution. So excuse me for not including those resolutions resolutions. For all the games tested the ultra preset was chosen always or anything highest that the game has to offer. DLSS quality was used and frame generation was set to on where available because these technologies do help a lot with frame rates and you are buying these cards to use everything they have to offer so obviously we are testing that and the FSR quality was used on the AMD side respectively. In some games ray tracing and path tracing were tested as well. First game is Alan Wake 2 and all the cards scale up nicely with the performance in both raster and path racing tests while AMD struggles with path racing being literally unplayable at 25 fps also raster performance is not that good compared to the RTX cards. Moving to the Atomic Heart, again all the cards scale nicely with 4090 pulling a lot ahead and 7900 XTX being just a hair better than 4070 Ti Super. In Cyberpunk 2077, well things here are interesting and we can again see nice scaling with each card in raster performance, ray tracing and path tracing as well again. 
to be expected, the AMD card struggles a lot with ray tracing technology. It is literally on the RTX 30 level, if not lower, and Cyberpunk being Nvidia Tech demo game, I am not surprised by the results, honestly. The raster performance with it is actually great. Far Cry 6 is the next game, ray tracing was enabled on all cards and here we see that AMD card is pulling ahead beating even the 4090 by a little, but we can say that it's a tie for all the cards here since they are all on the same level. 4080 Super being slower than 4070 Ti Super which is totally strange but it is what it is. In Forza Horizon 5 we can again see that with each stronger RTX card performance is on the rise and you can expect awesome performance in this game from each card tested. It is also worth mentioning that this was done using the internal benchmark test, I mean benchmark tool that game has, but when playing in real time AMD card is actually giving results that are more closer to the 4090 card. Ghost of Tsushima is giving us literally the same results across the board except for the 4090 of course, which is again a card in its own league. In God of War we are seeing that 4090 and 7900 XTX are so close to each other while both 4080 Super and 4070 Ti Super are behind here by a great margin. Hogwarts Legacy raster performance is once again great with each RTX card, scales nicely with all of them, while 7900 XTX is once again behind all the RTX cards. Horizon Forbidden West now game is in my opinion a great port from PS5, scaling with each card is so well done and you can see that the RX 7900 XTX is now literally where it needs to be according to its tier position. In Spider-Man Miles Morales is again another PS5 port done great where you can expect 200 plus FPS from all the cards tested. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a game that uses direct storage and it is recommended that you have a fast NVMe drive for this game as it will determine performance in some cases as well, mostly when loading levels. Here we can say that RTX 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super are literally tied, 7900 XTX is lacking behind 10 FPS while 4090 is literally destroying all of them again. In Star Wars Jedi Survivor, well, this is one of those games that are a clear indicator how a game should not be optimized at all. 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super being tied again, the AMD card demolished by other cards and 4090 literally 100 FPS better than the rest, double tested, got the same numbers. In Starfield you can see that the game scales nicely, but again being an AMD title it gives AMD cards a slight edge here too. In The Last of Us Part 1 this is the last game tested here, performance here is all over the place as you can see which actually means that the game scales well with each stronger card. So after all the tests here is what we can say, average FPS for the RTX 4070 Ti Super is 173 FPS, 4080 Super is around 194 FPS, RTX 4090 is around 230 FPS and 7900 XTX is around 180 FPS. I wasn't lazy and I tested productivity as well with these cards focusing mainly on video editing in DaVinci Resolve and here things are Interesting, I used AV1 encoder for the export, 10 minute 4K clip with a few transitions, few fusion effects and color grading applied to the video. The export times were crazy fast, 4070 Ti Super finishing the video in 2 minutes and 52 seconds, 4080 Super finishing it in 2 minutes and 45 seconds, literally the same but a little bit faster because of the core number that is higher on 4080 card. 4090 and the RX 7900 XTX were literally trading blows 2 minutes 28 seconds each. So I was a little suspicious once again, retested, same results every time, sometimes it was difference of 1 second for both cards. So here I must admit that AMD pulled itself together and finally improved video editing. And it is even a little bit faster if you are working with raw files. 
While gaming, all the cards were extremely cool, RTX 4070 Ti Super averages around 52 degrees, while gaming 4080 Super around 53, 4090 sits at 55 degrees and the 7900 XTX being slightly hotter at around 58 degrees. Of course, all the cards were super quiet while operating, you can always set custom fan curves for all the cards and thus keep the temperatures even a little bit lower at the cost of a slight noise increase. But given the fact that all of these cards now are 3.5 slots thick with massive heat sinks, you can leave them as is. So the question still remains which RTX 40 card to get for the best bang for the buck gaming experience? Well, here are the prices. 4070 Ti Super at the time of the review was 829 US dollars, 4080 Super 1019 US dollars, 4090 is at 1729 US dollars and the AMD card is 999 US dollars. Well, 4090 is without a doubt the best card to get if money is not a limiting factor. As I said before, it is a card in its own league, lonely at the top, but if you want best of the best, this is the card for you, there is no denying that, it is a monster. So it boils down to 4070 Ti Super or 4080 Super, where we see the difference of nearly 200 US dollars, that is around 23% price difference and exactly 12% performance difference in gaming. So if we look at which one is the better value here, 4070 Ti Super comes out as a clear winner. The RX 7900 XTX is positioned literally between the 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super. It is a card that is like the regular 4080 in terms of the performance, but if you are so keen on using ray tracing technology, then skip this card altogether as AMD is not yet on Nvidia level for ray tracing. Raster Gaming is excellent with AMD cards and 1% lows are much higher than with Nvidia cards. And they also have one ace in their sleeve, it's called AMD Fluid Motion Frames Technology or AFMF which literally doubles the frame rate but with a slight penalty for the image quality. It's a worthy competitor, I'll give them that, and especially that they improved video editing capabilities now, plus you are getting 24 gigabytes of VRAM that might be useful for something else other than gaming. So if you wish to use the same technique that AMD has the AFMF on Nvidia cards, it is doable for a couple of bucks on Steam, the app is called Lossless Scaling and it does exactly the same thing that AF MF is doing on AMD cards. There is also one more thing, since you can use FSR 3.1 on all of these cards, not just AMD cards, using it on Nvidia cards literally gives you slight FPS boost compared to the DLSS with minor to maybe no image quality loss that you can only notice while pixel peeping and comparing all the little details on the screen all the time. But if you want to just play the game, enjoy, enabling FSR 3.1 and frame generation on Nvidia cards will give you around 10 to 15 more FPS in all the games that I tested here and all the games that actually support FSR 3.1. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Huge thanks goes to PNY for providing the cards for the tests and our future builds that you will see on the channel. Hope you like this video and if you did thumbs up of course and if you did not like it, thumbs down but make sure to press it twice. See you in the next one.